Rock for Tone for Classic Rocks, 96.7 The Eagle. Good morning. It's Double T. Very special guest joining me. He's a comedian, an actor, director, writer. He does just about everything. It's Steve Byrne. How you doing this morning, Steve? Oh, my God. I, I think I called the wrong number. I was calling the request line for Delilah. <laughs> We'll put that on the list. You're going to jam some air supply in for me, right? Of course, just for yeah. you. Let people rock out to that. <laughs> Steve, before we get talking about your new project, I do have to say, one of my favorite shows of all time is The Middle. And when you were on there, I was so excited. I was wondering if you could do my resume for me. <laughs> You did watch it, okay. Um, yeah, that was that was kind of cool. I mean, my wife loves that show. So for, you know, when you come out to Hollywood and you audition for these things, telling her I got to be on The Middle, she's like, oh, she was so excited. I think she was more excited about The Middle than when I had my own show on the air. So. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you feel good, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> If anybody's been out to Vegas, they've probably seen the advertisements for Amazing Jonathan, who's done shows out there for years and always is busy out there. And you've got a project involving the Amazing Jonathan, don't you? Yeah, so the Amazing Jonathan, like you said, huge Vegas headliner, one of the first comics to pop off of Comedy Central in the 90s and 2000s, wears a headband, Freddy Krueger comedy, just a great, great fun comic magician and he kind of made magic cool not like nerdy <laughs> and basically a few years ago he was given a terminal diagnosis of cardiomyopathy which is a degradation of your heart so the doctor said you got a year to live get your affairs in order and he did he retired from comedy he retired from performing and he basically he outlived everybody's expectations and three years later he said i'm going to see if i still have it i'm going to see if i can still perform and do what my whole life has been about comedy magic so when i read about it and being friends with him i said somebody should make a film about this and i just thought the heck with it i'll just make a film about it I called some friends and we went out and made this documentary and now it's on youtube for free for everybody to see when you're putting together a project like this obviously you can call a couple of friends to help you out but what kind of time and effort did you have to put in this it took two years from start to finish i knew exactly the story i wanted to tell because jonathan is the face of the film but heart and soul of it is this wonderful relationship he fostered with a kid when this kid was 12 years old in australia named joel osborne and as the years went by every year jonathan went back to australia he would see this kid 13 14 and he'd teach him tricks and slowly give him responsibility and when joel turned 18 he basically said, do you want to be my road manager? And you got an 18-year-old kid being a tour manager for a drug addict who lives in Las Vegas, who saw him <laughs> through a suicide attempt, drug addiction, et cetera, et cetera. And Joel basically got Jonathan on track and get his life in order. And then he went to Australia to become a comedian on his own. So when Jonathan announced, I'm going to come back to the stage, Joel came back to open for him. So it all kind of came full circle. So I saw the film mapped out in my own head. So the story, I knew what to do. But it was all the archival footage and getting all that stuff together that it was very time-consuming. I'm talking to Steve Byrne. This story, obviously, Jonathan's a very entertaining guy, very funny guy. Where's the line of, you know, when you're making the documentary to kind of keep it entertaining, but then also there's the sad part of the story, too? There is the notion or the knowledge that Jonathan doesn't have much time left, right? That was like the bittersweet angle of it all. But I think Jonathan is such a great guy, and he's accepting of his fate, and he's so accepting of everything. He's an open book, openly talks about his drug addiction, in the film and openly talks about what it's like to know you're going to die, you know, within a year or two. I think when you pepper in all the archival laughs and the fact that he's a comedian, a magician, and you get to see these great performances, it is the push and pull of it all, I think, that drawing people to be emotional about it. We see in the comments on YouTube, it's been really nice. When did you get to know Jonathan? Jonathan, so when I was a comic in New York City, I was struggling and just starting off. The first time I ever featured for anybody on the road, I did back to back weeks make it profitable. So I went to Charlie Goodnights in North Carolina, and first week was with Brian Regan, and my second week was with Jonathan. And it was that weekend that I met Jonathan, and we just kind of hit it off, and then his road manager, Joel, and I really hit it off, because we're both huge Oasis fans. We are trading bootlegs, and every time I came out to L.A., I'd always stay at Jonathan's, or when I went to Vegas, I always went and saw a show, and they hooked me up at the Nuggets. So that's how the relationship kind of started. And what kind of influence did he have on you and your career? The influence I had was... Do not do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> because we do acknowledge that in the film where a lot of his, you know, close confidants and peers like David Copperfield and Penn Jillette talk about how Jonathan feels that it was good for his act and it enabled him, but then you're getting a different perspective from these lifelong professionals because they all are Vegas headliners, so it's kind of great to hear that perspective. I'm talking to comedian Steve Byrne. His latest project is called Always Amazing, the true story of the life, death, and return of the amazing Jonathan. Now, you talked about it being available on all things comedy, the YouTube page. This is great with new technology. You don't have to find this movie company to release it for you. Yeah, look, we took this film and we basically, my goal was to get this film done before Jonathan passed away. Thank God he's still with us, right? So he was able to see it. But when I saw the reception of it at, at a few film festivals, I just thought, I want as many people to see this as possible. What does everybody have access to? YouTube, and it's free. So that's why I put it up there. I just want people to enjoy this film. And in just a few short days, we've got like 130,000 views. And you know, YouTube can be very, very vile and... <laughs> Oh, yeah. Disgusting place with the comment section. I'd say uh, it's like 98% positive, which I've never seen in my life on anything or anything I've ever done. So I'm really blown away at the response. See, that's incredible. And the cool thing about it is, so I see it and then I share it with my friends and then they see it and then they share it with their friends. So it spreads quickly. We're certainly hoping that's the case, but we're, we're absolutely blown away. And I know that Jonathan is very happy because when you're kind of off the grid and you see that you're still relevant or you meant something to people's childhoods or their memories or the first time they came to Vegas, like those are all the things I know that are resonating with him and making him feel good. All Things Comedy, the YouTube page, what's the history of that? So Bill Burr and Al Magical, two great comedians, I've been friends with them for a long time. They have a bunch of podcasts up there, et cetera, et cetera, a bunch of kind of like fun little comedy things on, on the page, like Burt Kreischer's on there, Tom Segura, Bobby Lee. And I had had a podcast, and when the film was coming out, we thought, we want everybody to see this, and I partnered up with those guys, and that's basically where we put it, right on YouTube for free. It seems like the world of comedy right now is, all you guys are working together and really doing amazing things. Yeah, it's a symbiotic world, for sure. I mean, everybody that's involved in comedy knows the struggle, knows how hard it is to get anything going, and that's why even with the film, when it dropped, I tweeted about it, and then all my friends kind kind of came out of the woodwork from Bill Burr to Sebastian Maniscalco to Nick Swartz and to all these great comics. And I think it, that happens because everybody knows just how difficult this business truly is. So <laughs> it's nice to see the community get together for things like this. And you mentioned podcasting. I mean, that's become a huge thing in the world of comedy. Yeah, look, I've been going on a bunch. I'm going on Tom Segura's here in just a few minutes. You know, it's funny when you do these podcasts, then you read those comment sections, and over and over again from the podcast I've been on, I've been called an Asian Elon Musk, which I've never <laughs> realized. So I just hope Elon Musk gets called the White Steve Byrne. <laughs> That's my hope. You got to have a goal, right? You got to have goals in life. Absolutely, yeah. What else you got going on right now? Well, I did the doc here, and I'm wrapping up a feature film that I wrote and directed about my early years in stand-up called The Opening Act, and that's going to come out probably early 2020. And it's basically about a comedian. Like, a, every comic has that moment where they had that job, that safe corporate job, where they could see their lives unfolding in front of them, but they knew they had a passion for stand-up and they wanted to pursue their bliss. I wrote a film about that pivotal moment in, in one person's life and the whole film takes place over four days the first time this kid gets to go on the road so it's a crazy cast it's jimmy o yang plays like a younger version of me alex moffat plays the feature act and cedric the entertainer plays the headliner and then it's a ton of comics whitney cummings eliza schlesinger angela johnson kathleen madigan russell peters ken jung bill burr tom segura neil brennan Roy Wood jr felipe esparza and on and on and on there's a ton of great comics in this thing sounds like you're gonna owe a bunch of favors now oh i'm gonna owe a lot of favors for sure <laughs> yeah the rest of my life, I'll hear about it from all these guys for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to be hitting the road anytime soon? Yeah, and I'm still touring as a comic, so I'm constantly on the road. All my tour dates are SteveBurnLive.com. You can just go there. And again, you know, all of my social media is Steve Burn Live. You had the show Sullivan and Son for three seasons. That's a pretty good run for a show on cable like that. 
Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm very proud of the work we did on Sullivan and Son. It was some of the best years professionally I've ever had. I mean, I got to work with Dan Loria and Ryan Dolan Murray and Christine Ebersole and then all the other comics that were on it. And Rob Long, who was, you know, an EP on Cheers for many years. I mean, he was our showrunner. So it was a great crew. And the fact I got to work on it with Vince Vaughn and Peter Billingsley, who I consider my best pals, it was a dream come true. I'm talking to comedian Steve Byrne. From talking to you in the past, I know you're a hockey fan. Who's going to win this Stanley Cup final? Well, I'd say that was a crazy game game last night. I thought the Blues might have done it at home, but they came to the pressure. They're going back to Boston for Game 7. Who doesn't love a Game 7? But my call, as much as Bill Burr might be upset with me, I think the Blues are going to pull this off. They're going to pull an upset and they're going to get their first cup since they came into the league, the same as my beloved Pittsburgh Penguins in 67. Wow, see, that would be huge. I think the fans would pull down the St. Louis Arch if they do win. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Once again, the movie's called Always Amazing, the true story of the life, death, and return of the amazing Jonathan, available for free on All Things Comedy YouTube page. I look forward to checking it out. Where can people find you, Steve? Steve Burn Live. Everything I have, social media-wise, is Steve Burn Live. You just follow me you'll get the link and then when the opening act comes out I'd like to let you know as well thank you thanks so much for taking the time I look forward to seeing a documentary and maybe catching you sometime in the near future absolutely thank you so much for having me it's comedian Steve Byrne on Rockford's Home for Classic Rock 96.7 The Eagle